Hey guys, it's me Cora and today I'm going to be bringing you a Q&A video and I haven't done one of these in a number of years, not in, for any you know big reason or anything, but I thought it would be a great way for me to sort of let you guys get to know me better, answer some of your makeup questions, some of your non-makeup questions. And I actually asked for these questions almost a month ago and I actually filmed a video, but it had a number of technical issues with most of which I was like, whatever, fine, whatever, I don't care. But um, there was one that I just couldn't overlook and it was a wonky falsy. That's a no-no in my world. So I'm going to go ahead and refilm this for you guys today. And I'm looking over here because I have some of the questions pulled up from Facebook. I also have some on Instagram that I will pull up from my phone. We're going to get started with Facebook since I have that already open. Uh, Casey Masson wants to know, if you could live one, in one era of makeup, which would it be? And I, I feel like the 1920s, and here's why. I feel like it was such a fun time and so experimental. And I feel like you could really help shape, you know, the first like real makeup trends of the 20th century. So I feel like that would be definitely the time that I'd want to live in. But I think I would also really enjoy the 40s because that style of makeup, you know, the winged liner, the structured brow, the, you know, lashes and the red lips, that's so iconic to, like, that's kind of like my base for makeup. So either the 20s or the 40s. Ooh, okay, Christy Mazer has kind of a toughie. Uh, she says, how do you feel about or respond to backlash that plus size bloggers vloggers get when they so much as casually mentioned that they were at the gym or tried a new low-cal recipe and are accused of selling out. I mean, honestly, I feel like the candle burns at both ends. You've got the people who are saying, you know, how dare you, um, you know, promote that, you know, beauty or, or health at any size. So you've got those people that are, you know, upset that you're fat and fabulous. And then you have the people who are like, how dare you try to change your body? At the end of the day, you gotta just push all of that out and you just gotta live your life. That's just how I feel personally. You know, whether I want to lose weight or don't want to lose weight or anything. And, and, and also just because you work out doesn't mean that you want to lose weight. It's just, you're just doing something that's healthy for your body. Um, and in terms of like locale recipes and stuff, I, yeah, I love skinny taste, the cookbook skinny taste and the blog. It's one of my favorites and it really has very little to do with how, you know, things are locale or whatever, but it has a lot to do with the fact that they're really, really good. <laughs> Pam Culver wants to know, I'm always impressed with your hair color. Thanks, girl. <laughs> um, and I've always, I've actually saved some photos to take to my uh, next salon appointment. Oh, I can't talk. Um, where do I get my inspiration or where do you get your inspiration? Uh, this is so like weird, like reading this like semi third person. Anyway, um, for my hair, it, a lot of times it has to do with just seeing where my hair is at and where I can go with it from there because sometimes I want to do like something you know crazy like when I bleached it all out and then it was like crap my hair is so damaged I need to chill on doing anything for with it for a while which is really where I've been lately just trying to like take care of it and when I do color it I try to color it in the, in the least damaging ways possible uh, and sometimes I just have to let it fade out for a little bit and see what I can do with it which is what I'm in the process of in right now so the copper bits are getting a little lighter a little pink or a little blonder as time goes on I actually like right now um, but I am contemplating a hairstyle change so your question is where do I find inspiration and the answer is Pinterest and I want to invite you guys to actually follow my hair pin board which is called hair today gone tomorrow and I am in the middle of contemplating a new hair change so you guys might want to go ahead and check that out so Alicia Upton asked as a professional artist what is what would you say are some of the best ways to change your routine as you age I feel like my Skin is a different type and different shade every day. Our skin does change as we age, but it doesn't necessarily, we don't all change in the same way. Um, so there's there's no like blanket term like, in your 40s, you should do this, and when you're 75, you should do that because all of our skin is different. Uh, my biggest thing is having a few different types of things on hand so I can use what my skin needs that day. So like, for instance, I have a couple of different night moisturizers. There's one that's more hydrating for when it's a little drier, one's a little bit less hydrating so that I'm not putting something too heavy based on what my skin needs and also because I live in California the weather changes kind of dramatically um, and just the same kind of thing with foundation you know like the foundation that I'm wearing today is actually my tinted moisturizer mixed in with my foundation where is it my naked skin from Urban Decay mixed in with this because today I just felt like I needed a little more hydration but I wanted a little more coverage so I mixed them together so you know it's really about Having a couple things on hand, and I know it's obviously more expensive. Okay, so Shannon Wright wants to know, how do I go about um, lining my lips without lip liner? She's got some issues with, you know, 
color or texture issues. I actually have those same issues right here. I have a lip scar that I've had since I was about four because I tried to kiss a dog and he was not having it. So I do, I do understand where, you know, kind of trying to create something where there isn't something there. You mentioned that you don't have as much problem with the top lip. So what I would try to do if I were you is line out that top for lip first and then try to balance the size of the bottom lip because you, you mentioned that you have problems with it either looking overlined or underlined. The other thing that I personally do is a lot of times I will actually apply my lip, lipstick first and then put lip liner on on the outside over that and then go over it with a small brush. Something like this that has a flat edge is really great for smoothing out those edges once you have everything applied. Um, and that's really, that's really all lips are really about. I mean, sometimes you want things out of balance because you want that bottom or the top lip to look poutier, but really it's about trying to keep those two in balance. So because you don't have a problem with the top lip, do that one first and then do the bottom and try to match them up. Peggy Scanlon wants to know, how do I figure out contour colors for other people? Um, I'm going to be totally honest, and this is a frustrating answer, I know, but a lot of it is just intuition. Having done it for a while, I just have certain colors that I go to for certain people. Part of it is recognizing the undertone of their skin, like for instance, um, I like a, a grayer contour for me because I am very, very pale. So if I use something that has a warmer tone on someone who has very pale skin, it's going to look really orange really quickly, particularly if it has a lot of yellow in it. Um, likewise, if someone has a lot of yellow in their skin and I go in with something that is grayer, it's going to look dirty on their skin. So it's really a little bit of trial and error, a little bit of common sense, and then after a while it becomes intuition and you don't even know why you're grabbing for something. You're just like, this is what works, dude. I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. So it's really, you know, and having a variety of a few different types. And another thing too is that there's some people whose skin actually works better with highlighting than with actually contouring and you end up using their skin tone as the contour. Haley Hadley wants to know, what is my favorite memories or moments from the past year? Absolutely getting to go to New York. That was a monumental moment for me. I love New York. I cannot wait to go back. I'm already trying to like plot and plan how I can go back. Uh, it's just a beautiful city and I feel like I didn't really, I got to see plenty of it, but I feel like I didn't get to see enough. So I definitely loved being able to go to New York. That was wonderful. Karen Preston wants to know how old I was when I got married. I was 22 and she says, um, as a plus size girl, she finds that a lot of men aren't interested in me for physical reasons. I'm going to quote Dita Von Teese here because one of her most famous quotes is, you can be the ripest, juiciest peach and there's going to be someone out there who doesn't like peaches. The fact of the matter is there are people who are not going to be attracted to your body type, just as there's going to be people who are not attracted to your personality or there's not, there's going to be people who don't like, who only like brunettes and you're a blonde. It, it, you cannot control other people, but what you can do is once you figured out someone's not into you for your physical appearance, realize that that person's not for you. You know, there's people out there who are going to find you attractive and they're going to approach you. And a lot of it is the vibe you're putting off. You know, if you're putting off this like insecure, you know, this guy's not going to think I'm sexy, standoffish point of view, that's that vibe you're giving off. It's about projecting confidence and, you know, seeking out people who are interested in you. I find that a lot of people end up, you know, no matter what their size is, they end up being attracted to people who aren't into them. So it's not necessarily because you're plus size. It could just be the vibe that you're putting out there. Um, there are, if you're interested in meeting someone who's specifically interested in plus size people, there's a lot of question about whether or not that's fetishism or if it's just having a type, but there are actually dating sites dedicated to plus size people if that would make you feel more comfortable. Aga Marie Alvarez Whirly, that's a name for the books, <laughs> wants to know, am I going to be doing any artistic makeup looks inspired by cult pop culture in the future because she loved my Disney princesses and Sailor Moon looks? Well, first of all, thank you, dude. Um, and secondly, I do have a series coming up soon that it, well, there's a series coming up. I will leave it at that. It's not inspired by any particular pop culture phenomenon, but it is going to be an inspiration and, in, you know, series and I'm going to get you guys involved in it and I'm really excited about it. I'm oh, just going to zip the lip until further notice. <laughs> Judith Colson, I love this question. She says, if I didn't own any makeup at all and you walked into an Ulta together, what would you tell me to buy first? Are we talking like a whole haul or are we talking about like one singular beauty product? I think that I would probably recommend a couple of eyeshadow brushes, an eyeshadow palette and a primer. With that, you could do a lot of really fun stuff with makeup. 
or if we're literally talking about literally one product, a tinted moisturizer or a foundation or something like that just to kind of get you going in the direction because really bold eye makeup does tend to look better on someone who has a, you know a, a polished complexion although Jay Kissa doesn't wear foundation and looks freaking incredible so I'm gonna go with my original answer actually of that little kit Marlana wants to know what is your favorite book and what are you reading right now and what is the next book you'd like to read? I don't know that I have one singular favorite book. Just it kind of depends on what mood I'm into because I like a lot of different genre genres if you will. I actually just picked up a book that is like a memoir by Marlene Dietrich's daughter and I'm really excited to read it and I got it on Amazon for one penny. One penny, I'm not kidding, and I, I paid for shipping, but so altogether it was exactly four dollars. It was amazing, um, and it's, I haven't bought like a physical book in a while, so it's kind of cool. Talitha wants to know, have I ever considered creating your own line of products, be it fashion, makeup related, a book, etc.? Yes, 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 and yes. I mean, I feel like the goal is to do, uh, you know, fashion line, especially um, there's so many makeup lines out that I'm I would be very interested in creating like a product line with an existing brand, but I don't know if I have it in me to do my own makeup line only because I would just want it to be so perfect and the money that it, it, it costs to get started up with this kind of thing is insane. Um, but fashion line is something I've definitely considered. I actually studied fashion design in high school and love it. And I have thought about coming out with a beauty or advice type book or something like that. So I don't know. We'll see. You never know what the future holds. Um, Chelsea Abel wants to know, do I fly out to clients or do I stick with California? I would love to be hired and, and fly out to a client, but the cost of a ticket and, you know, a hotel stay and everything like that is more than what I charge to do makeup. So I don't see how, I, I've never had anyone offer to do that and I don't think it'd be very economical for them. Uh, but I, I'm, I'm quite willing. <laughs> Some of these questions are hard because like they're, if you know, if you could do any celebrities makeup or if you could sit down with anyone, da 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 And the first time that I filmed this video, I actually answered David Bowie, but I actually, I filmed that before he passed away. And I feel, I still feel that way, but I know a lot of people are gonna think I'm just saying that because he passed away. Honestly, he meant a lot to me. Um, his music and just him as a person meant a lot to me, so. That's kind of where I'm at with it. Um, if I could really sit down with anyone, it would be my mother, but since that's completely impossible, we're just gonna skip over and move on. Nadine says she's tried to use a brush for applying foundation and just can't get it down. She feels that it makes her pores more visible. I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. There's a million different ways to apply foundation or blend eyeshadow or whatever whatever it is that you're trying to achieve and if one of them's not working for you but another one does you you're not you don't have to do it you know that way so if you've tried a brush and it doesn't work for you but using your fingers works as long as your fingers are clean do it um, if using a beauty blender works best for you, do that. Um, likewise, if you don't like a beauty blender, use a brush. You know, I, 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 for me personally, I'm constantly trying to learn new techniques because I want to be able to test things out and review them for you guys. And also because I'm a makeup artist, I feel like I might be more naturally inclined to be able to figure it out a little bit easier. But there's no reason why you should have to do your makeup some way just because you saw like a beauty a beauty guru talking about how, oh, this is the best foundation brush ever. And the fact of the matter is we all are different in the way that we actually physically apply things. We all have different faces. We all are using different makeup. So don't feel that you have to struggle and, and all that. But with that said, sometimes it is just about further practice or using a different primer or something like that. So experiment a little. If you find it's not for you, forget it. Use, use a different method that you find works great for you. Hey Jackson wants to know what I do with the products that I don't like. That's actually a really good question. You know, I have products that I purchase I end up disliking or things that companies send to me. And I have a lot of friends and family who really love what I do for a living because I'm able to give it out to them. So just this last Christmas, I brought a big old bucket and just let everyone kind of go at it and pick out what they want. It's kind of fun to like do these little grab bags and stuff with my friends and family of different skin. So something that for me was a total bust might be great for them. And if not, hey, they didn't have to pay for it. Laura wants to know, um, she says, I sound well-spoken and intelligent in my videos. She wants to know what my highest level of education is or hope to achieve. Uh, I am a college dropout. 
Um, I was going to school for interior design. I loved it and I just felt like deep down that I wasn't ready to be an interior designer. A lot of interior design, like when I went into it, I felt like, oh, it's just like decorating. And then as I got more and more into it, I realized that it was really architectural and it's about problem solving. And it, it wasn't so much that I was disinterested. If anything, it, it actually whet my appetite more. I took drafting in high school. I was really, really into it. But I felt like I needed some life experience in order to know how to problem solve a little bit better. And I think that as you get older, you do know how to problem solve better. So it is something I would actually like to revisit. I've also thought about going back to school and getting a degree in like marketing or communications. Um, I just feel like I know myself better and I feel like in a lot of ways people who are very very young and going to college really don't know what they want to do and they end up having a degree in something that is not that just isn't applicable to what they want to do once they figure it out. So in some ways I feel fortunate that I that I dropped out of college, which is weird. So Annalise wants to know, hey Annalise, um, what is my most awe-inspiring celebrity run-in? I don't feel like I've met, I guess probably Tess Munster. I, I'm a huge fan of her and I was so fortunate last year. I got an opportunity to work with her on a couple of videos, which were amazing and I will link in the description bar down below because it was such, an out of body experience. She was amazing. You know, a lot of times you meet people like on from YouTube or whatever and they're just not what you expect and she was amazing. Um, but the other person that I met who is not necessarily like a celebrity, um, but she writes these books I love is uh, Lauren Reynolds. I got to meet her in Las Vegas back in October. I was hired to be a model for a TV show, which I will talk about in a future video, a little nugget for, for later. Um, but she was also hired to be a model for this thing and so, I sat down at breakfast and she turned to me and she said, are you vintage or tacky? And I said, oh, hi, you know, I'm Cora. And she goes, hi, I'm Lauren, Lauren Reynolds. And I'm like, what? I like, I had like cold sweat and I acted like a total freak um, because she's such an inspiration to me and I didn't know what she looked like and she was warm and kind and so wonderful to meet and it's definitely one of the highlights of 2015 for me was being able to meet Lauren Reynolds and also uh, Tess Munster, both redheads. So maybe I have a redhead fetish. Okay, Chocolate Hearts of Weight wants to know, am I a shoe girl or a bag girl?